What's going on you guys? My name is Ben Can, and we're going to be taking in the Mustang up to Willwood to dial in the brakes. The proportion valve is completely out of adjustment, so hopefully we could figure that out. And if anything else is wrong with the car, that would be cool too. So we'll see you guys there. And then have you checked how much vacuum you make? Off the booster? Yeah. No. Well, you should always do that. So even if someone says like, oh, I got a stock engine, mm -hmm. right? It's always good to see if you have enough vacuum to even make a power brake work properly. Mm -hmm. So our rule of thumb, and this is based off of people who do power brakes, uh -huh. is 18 cubic inches. Okay. So let's just say you have a cam in this, do you? Yeah. Okay it might be reducing our vacuum down to 15. And then with this little tiny booster, it's not holding a lot of volume. So if you try to do repeated stops, like through the canyon, yeah. does the pedal get firm? Sometimes it's like inconsistent. Yeah. Because you're running out of vacuum. Okay. So that's why in a lot of cars that we performance drive, we go manual. Yeah. So here's something that a lot of people, I, I always kind of make them aware of what we're talking about. Do race cars have power brakes? No. Why? Just for, I would think for it has better feel. Way better feel yeah. and repeatability. You hit the pedal every time and the only thing that can really change is how much pad you wore out or saturation of the system. So you get, you know, the brakes too hot and then you get fade because of either the brake fluid or the brake pad, right? But with a booster, you can get a lot of inconsistencies. If you're on the quarantine cruise, probably not a problem. You're going down Main Street, engines idling, it's building vacuum. But if you went out to the autocross this past weekend, mm -hmm. you'd probably get into about the third turn and the pedal would be a lot firmer. Yeah. Because you don't have any vacuum left because it can't make enough. Mm -hmm. And how many hot rods have like big engines in them? Most of them. Yeah. Right? So they usually don't make enough vacuum. Yeah. And then because you put such a big engine, you put a small booster. Mm -hmm. So that would be something that we should probably check. Yeah. That would be good. And it's and it's something that we always ask everybody. Yeah. So if you do feel inconsistencies, it's usually not because of what's at the four corners. It's usually what's feeding it. Interesting, okay. Okay, nine times out of 10, we don't have enough vacuum. So everything else looks good. So at this point, Mike wanted to test how much vacuum I was making. So he attached the vacuum gauge to the car. And when we started it up, it was dancing around 11 cubic inches, which is not good at all. You really want to be around 18 cubic inches. So what we discovered was that my brake booster wasn't really doing anything at all. It was funny, Mike said my brakes right now are worse than manual brakes. So an interesting note about this is when I would take the car out, the brakes would be really sensitive the first time I used them. And then after that, they wouldn't be as responsive. So give it a couple to build up some PSI. Okay, now feel it. So this totally makes sense. When I would drive the car, it would build up vacuum. And then after the first use of the brakes, it would struggle to build it back up. And then the only other thing I noticed was when I pressed down on the brakes, you get some movement on the fire roll. Is that normal or? That's a Mustang. Okay. You know, that's something that these cars inheritedly have an issue with. Oh really? Oh, okay. big time. So I would even say that there's some Mustang companies out there that are making some kind of bracket that might go on the inside on the tow board to keep it from flexing so much. My dad came out to check and I was like, pressed on the brake, like, oh, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> but I guess it's just- Well, yeah, let's look at it. Hit, go hit the pedal real quick. I don't think it's really gonna show. Oh my God, you know what it's gonna show? Yeah. So that's not really a brake issue, that's a chassis issue. And they're like, my pedal feels squishy. What's well, because they don't have this and this 
mocked up in the car. Mm -hmm. That 90 degrees really helps this pedal so there's less compliance, right? Yeah. But if you only had it on the firewall, imagine this on that firewall. <laughs> Holy crap, and you yeah. got way more leverage. That makes sense. It just, uh, uh. let's do one more test. I'm gonna see how the calipers are centered up. Just give me a one, two, three. So what Mike is looking for here is if the caliper is centered over the rotor, Will would supplies you with shims and you put them on and then you try to get it as centered as possible. I went down to the hardware store and I found a half size of what Will would supplied me to get it perfect, but I'm happy the extra work I put in paid off. So after Mike checked out all those things on my car, we took the Mustang out onto the streets and adjusted the proportion valve. Now this was the main reason why I came out to Wilwood in the first place, but I guess there was a lot of other things wrong with the car. But anyways, Mike had me go up and down the street and slam on the brakes. He basically just wanted to see how the car would respond. So the first couple of times I slammed on the brakes, nothing happened. The brakes wouldn't lock up, which is funny because I thought I had adjusted it somewhat. So he came up to the car and turned the proportion valve eight whole times, which is crazy. I didn't know I was that far off. So after a few braking tests, Mike discovered that my passenger rear drum would lock up before my driver's side drum would, which is kind of dangerous, but it's an easy fix. So what Mike suggested to do now was to take two turns out from the proportion valve so that the rear brakes wouldn't lock up as quickly. You really don't want one drum locking up before the other. So after I fix all the issues that Mike discovered today, I'm gonna have to readjust the proportion valve, which isn't that big of a deal, but right now my car stops a lot better than it did before, so I'm happy he was able to help me out with that. I end up going so I have the most amount of brakes so then I can take some away. Because yeah. as we're doing the testing, the brakes get hot, so then they're working more optimal. So I just made it back. Huge shout out to Wilwood for helping me sort out my brakes. It's funny, we were supposed to do this a long time ago, but you know, a lot has happened since then. But uh, yeah, so next couple of videos or so, I'm gonna be converting my brakes to manual, and I'm also gonna reinforce the firewall. So if you guys wanna check that out, that will be out soon. And I have one more thing to show you. So yeah, I picked up some new tires for the car. Don't worry, these are only going on the rear end, just to burn them up and stuff. I need 15 by eight wheels, so I want like some like Halibrand style wheels, slotted mags, something like that. Just something vintage, just for, you know, going drag racing or just burn rubber. I think it'll be fun, so if you have wheels that you want to get rid of or sell, email me at fourspeedfilms at gmail.com. So anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video, and thank you for all the support.